My father's dad, his name was Howard, and I called him Granddaddy. And then my mom's stepdad, his name was Jerry, and I called him D-Dad. Of course, I'm talking about my two grandfathers. Uh, and the reason I am is because today's soap is Chats with Grandpa, another shave with a Hub City Shaving Company soap. I, in my last video, I talked about how excited I was to try Pages because I am from Lubbock and uh, I'm excited to use Pages. Now, I have tried it already. I did get a sample. You can see it's kind of a smaller uh, little uh, canister there. And I can go ahead and open it up and you can see that it's actually uh, good for maybe four to five shaves or so. Pretty good amount that uh, they hook you up with there. So very excited to kind of share my thoughts on this. So as far as the razor, uh, I'll go ahead and hold this up. This is a Gillette uh, tech razor that I found on eBay. Beautiful razor. It's in great condition. Not exactly sure how old it is. It doesn't seem to have the uh, serial number and whatnot stamped on the bottom, I guess is maybe around the 60s or so, but it's really cheap. I picked it up for like 15 bucks on eBay and it gives a very mild, nice shave. And then the razor that I'm pairing with that is the Gillette Nasset. And I know that's a really popular razor for um, wet shavers. A lot of people really enjoy that, that blade. Uh, it's okay, uh, I didn't. It, it's not my favorite. Again, I'm kind of partial to treat uh, blades even some of the carbon um, steel blades uh, versus stainless steel. You can only get a few shaves out of those. You wanna make sure those don't rust, obviously, but this blade hasn't been too bad. And then finally, the, the brush that I'm using, I'm soaking it here, but I'll give you a better look at it. Uh, the, my Samoog horsehair uh, brush, and uh, I've, I've used this in other videos. It's a great little brush, kind of a smaller knot but it still whips up a decent lather. So, and then finally, the aftershave that I'm using. Now, my grandfather, uh, Howard especially, I remember he was an Old Spice guy. He smelled like Old Spice, uh, you know. But my dad, who's a grandpa, again, I have a daughter and another kid on the way, always used British Sterling. And when I think of British Sterling, I think of my dad. Now, he's kind of stopped using it. Uh, they kind of changed the formula a few years ago and he doesn't like it anymore. I don't even know what he uses now, but he will for all he will forever to me smell like British Sterling. So that's why I'm using British Sterling for today. I've got quite a bit of growth. Look at this. I've got like four, maybe five days growth. I've just been real busy and haven't had a chance to shave. So um, we're gonna knock all that down with the Gillette combo. Uh, I've already pressed a little bit of it into a bowl here and uh, Start, start whipping up this lather. So yeah, my two grandfathers, I mentioned my mom's stepdad because her father uh, was actually killed in a car wreck when she was very, very young. So I never met him at all. Um, and then um, my grandmother, my mom's mother remarried and married uh, a gentleman named Jerry. They couldn't have been two different people. Uh, Jerry was very highly educated. Uh, college degree. Um, he read a lot. He wrote a lot. He wrote poetry. Uh, a, a renaissance man, if you will. Um, this is whipping up a great lather, by the way. Uh, really enjoy the scent. It smells like a grandpa. Kind of sweet smelling and musk. It's good stuff. I like it. My wife actually thinks she likes chats with grandpa better than pages. I think I'm partial to pages. But yeah. Great, great lather, great brush. Uh, yeah, like I said, kind of a renaissance man, Jerry was, D-Dad, as I called him. The reason I called him D-Dad is he, uh, uh, they, when I was really, really young, like one, they all the family asked asked D-Dad, what, what do you want to be called? Grandpa, you know, uh, what, whatever you want to be called. He said, how about uh, Mr. Henderson, his last name, or how about Sir? <laughs> That's what, that's what he said. And they said, fine, we'll let Drew pick what he should be called. And I went with D-Dad, so he was D-Dad, forever D-Dad. Uh, and then, like I said, he wrote poetry. Um, he read a lot. He, he would actually get up and speak, uh, you know, do his poetry live. Um, yeah, interesting guy. He actually, much like my mom's actual father, he was killed in a car wreck as well. I was in the eighth grade. I remember the night we got the call. Um, 
a guy had stolen a case of beer from a liquor store and that guy ran and the liquor store owner chased him so they had a high speed chase and then that guy ran a red light and my a uh, uh, stop sign rather and my grandfather was hit on, on his side of the car and it killed him my grandmother was in the car it almost killed her as well anyways <laughs> Uh, but like I said, I was very young when that happened. Jerry was a good guy. Um, a lot of fond memories, memories with Jerry. Um, versus my dad, uh, not, uh, let me not say versus. My dad's dad, on the other hand, his name was Howard. Um, I called him Granddaddy. He's kind of a ornery dude. Not, not mean by any means. Oh, he was the sweetest guy in the world. Um, but kind of ornery and... Not highly educated. I, I believe he only had a sixth grade education. And uh, he had like 13 brothers and sisters. He was the oldest boy. He was um, enlisted in the army during World War II. And I believe Jerry, I know Jerry was in uh, the Navy. And I'm pretty sure he fought in World War II as well. But I do know they were both, they both served. But Howard, I'm certain of. Howard... Uh, served in World War II. He was in Japan. He was involved with the cleanup after we dropped the bomb. I believe it was Hiroshima. I'm not exact. I'm not 100. It's one or the other, right? But he has pictures and whatnot from Ground Zero, if you will. Um, the United States dropped the bomb, and then we helped clean up. But uh, yeah. Um, also. Howard passed away at a pretty early age. He um, he died of esophageal cancer and stomach cancer. He smoked, he chewed tobacco, and he passed away when I was like in the sixth grade. So I lost both of my grandfathers at a pretty young age. But I still have lots of memories with them. Now that my dad is a grandpa, he goes by Papa. Uh, Jerry, my mom's stepdad. Him and my grandmother lived kind of out in the country on a on a lake, actually. And I would go spend weekends with them and just kind of roaming around the countryside. You had to watch out for rattlesnakes because it's West Texas. And, uh, but I, you know, I'd go out on that lake and they had a, they had a jet ski and I'd go ride around on that. And a little paddle boat and stuff. And then Howard, my dad's dad, they lived in town. And uh, I'd go spend weekends with them, too, and his, his wife, my grandmother. And uh, just interesting, interesting folks. I told you that my grand, my Howard, my dad's dad was kind of ornery. He owned a gas station and that's where he worked most of his life. He ran a very small gas station where, you know, he would come out and pump the gas for you, check your oil, stuff like that. Full service. And when my dad was younger, he would go hang out and spend time, you know, with his dad at the gas station. What well, was very popular uh, back in the day when gas was super cheap. When gas was like 40 cents a gallon or something. A group of people, usually like guys, college guys or something, would kind of pool all their money and get like a, a 20 or even like a $50 bill. For like a dollar fifty in gas, you could get enough. You could get three or four gallons of gas, enough to get you around for the night, you know. But they knew that these gas stations couldn't break a fifty sometimes, you know. 
And if you get four guys together, five, five guys together, they can all pitch in 10 bucks and now you've got a $50 bill. So they'd roll up to these places, they'd ask for a dollar and 50, maybe gas was more like 30 cents or so. So they'd ask for like three gallons, three, you know, four gallons of gas, and then they would pay with a 50 and they would know that they couldn't break it. Sometimes they would get the gas for free. <laughs> So my dad tells the story that these guys pulled up in a Mustang, brand new Mustang, like back in the 70s, late, I guess it would have been late 60s, early 70s. And my grandfather was closing for the night. He was already pretty much done for the night. It was probably eight o'clock at night. And he just got a hunch. I guess they were college guys. And that they were gonna try the old like $50 bill trick. And my grandfather said to my dad, he said, and my dad's a little kid, he says, if those expletive guys out there want three, three gallons worth of gas and try to pay with a 50, I'm gonna tell them to get the expletive out of here. My grandfather cursed a lot. And my dad said he walked out there. My dad was sitting inside watching the whole thing go down. And my grandfather walked out there. Usually he would pick up the, the uh, nozzle and just start pumping and then start cleaning their windshield and checking their oil and stuff. But instead he walked straight over to the, um, to the driver's side window. And my dad couldn't see what he was saying, but I'm sure he was asking them, how much gas do you want and what are you paying with? I think I'm starting to see a little bit of, a little bit of haze develop on my lens here. Hopefully it's not. It's pretty humid in here, obviously. I just got out of the shower. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but I'm sure he was asking him, how much gas do you want and what are you paying with? And my dad said, all he knows is that my grandfather stood up and pointed the get, get out of here point, pointed to the road. And my dad said he could read his lips, and his lips said, get the expletive out of here. <laughs> and he said, that Mustang smoked its tires. He said, that guy floored it and just smoked his tires all the way out of the parking lot and out onto the street. And then my grandfather walked in and flipped the, the sign, took sorry, we're closed, and locked the door and didn't say another word for the rest of the night. <laughs> Funny story. My dad says he also sawed his thumb off one time. Uh, he, my dad was sitting at the kitchen table, again, kind of a, a young kid, maybe doing some homework or something. And my grandfather was out in the garage working on something with a circular saw or a table saw or some sort of, well, some sort of electric saw. <laughs> and all of a sudden they hear the saw stop and they hear a lot of cursing coming from the garage. And he says that he calmly walked into the house, covered in blood, uh, probably wearing a white t-shirt, kind of like I'm wearing. That's what my grandfather, I always remember him just wearing a white t-shirt around the house and slacks, but covered in blood and holding his left thumb in his, in his right hand. And he didn't say a word. He walked in. He took a salt shaker like that had a pop off. It was like Tupperware brand, pop that top off poured salt on the stump. He then took the nub, his severed thumb, walked over to the, the um, freezer, took out the ice tray and just shoved his thumb in that ice, put that ice tray, like, like bucket of ice more or less, under his arm and walked out to his truck and drove off. Didn't say a word. And then he came home like five or six hours later. He had driven himself to the emergency room and they sewed it back on. And I remember as a kid, I could see the scar. It, it took, like it, it, he still had it, but he had no feeling in it at all. And I remember him dropping stuff. He would forget that he couldn't grip anything with that thumb. He basically just sat there like this and he would drop like a jar of pickles and then start cursing. <laughs> and it's because he forgot that he couldn't use his thumb. Interesting guy. I don't have as many good stories about Jerry. I didn't see him as much. Like I said, they kind of lived out in the country. Um, we would sit on the, they had like a, we call it a sunroom. 
It's a room that's all windows and it lets lots of sunlight in. Um, but I remember sitting out with him at night and we turn all the lights off and since it was in the country, critters would come up. Raccoons, the occasional fox, skunks as big as basketballs. It was funny. So lots of memories sitting him with him and getting out on the boats, you know. He had a little like John boat with like a trolling motor, nothing fast or fancy, but we'd ride around on that. That was fishing with him. We did a lot of fishing since they lived on a on a lake. There would be occasional like centipedes and scorpions in the house and occasional snakes in the house. They lived out in the country. West Texas, man, it's hardcore. Hub City Soap Company from the harsh plains of West Texas. I'm going to check the, I'm seeing that fog again. Give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. I don't think it looks too bad. And of course, I've always got this other camera over here, you know, if I need it, so. It's moist in here. If you remember my last video, I talked about that friend of mine that passed away. His service is today. I'm actually going to it. It's Sunday here. It's Sunday, August 30th. And they're having a service for him outdoors because of COVID. I think we're going to sing some karaoke after that. I don't know if I'm going to sing karaoke, passing a mic around. I don't know if I'm keen on that just yet. I'm more cautious about COVID because of, um, because I have a wife and a pregnant wife and a little kid. I just don't know what to make of all the COVID stuff. Maybe it's all a big hoax. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I wear a mask. I, it's not that much of an inconvenience, and if even if it was all a big hoax and we didn't even really need to wear masks, it was not that much of an inconvenience to me. I find that I'm wearing it so much, I kind of get used to it. When I'm at work, we have to wear it in the common areas, not when we're in our offices or at our desks. But a lot of times, I sit down and then forget that I've even got it on. Um, so, like I said, not a huge inconvenience. I don't think I need the Allen block, but I'll do it anyways. nice to use the Allen block and not feel a thing. But that Gillette razor took care of five, four or five days worth growth. <clears throat> Get it open here. feel a thing. Maybe a little bit right here. This is always kind of a problem spot for me. 
my right side neck. My cheeks and sideburn area, never a problem. Nothing here, perfect shave. And I still smell that wonderful soap. Okay. Dry that off here in a bit. British Sterling. This one's missing the label. Like the label is starting to peel off. I've had this one a while, you can tell. It's down to like the last quarter or so. The label was coming off. Normally it has this kind of circular silver label. It looks like a flask. A flask, sorry. I always thought that was kind of funny. You stick it in your pocket, have your little nip. I got a little too much over here. It burns. It burns like the Dickens, and it's a very strong scent. My wife doesn't really even like it. Very alcohol based. Even after using the Allen block, I still feel a little bit of a burn. But boy, it smells like my dad. My dad's a retired firefighter, and he would shave right before he'd go to the fire station uh, in the evenings at about five o'clock. And I remember watching him shave. He just used a, either used an electric razor or just a cheap blue disposable with a can of shaving cream. But he would always use British Sterling aftershave. Feels good. Well, folks, that's all I've got. Talked about my grandfathers, my dad, who is a grandfather as well. I'll probably be pretty old by the time I become a grandfather. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, the next soap I plan on using is um, a rather old tube that I have of Old Spice soap. So I'll be using that next. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day.